All right, more factoring in this video. Last time we covered binomials. Now we're going to continue with trinomials, where we have expressions with three terms and, of course, higher degree exponents. Starting with a review, you should know how to factor this. All we do is find two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 12, and that would be x plus f uh, 4 and 3. So this is x plus 4 times x plus 3. So here is how we add a new element to it with higher degree exponents. Now we no longer have x squareds plus x plus constants. We can have all different kinds of terms in these trinomials. Now this one's pretty basic. We're going to do the same thing we did in the last video. We have an x in all of these, so let's just start by factoring that out. And then we'll end up with the exact same thing that we just did right here. So we're just going to write x plus 4 times x plus 3. Make sure to carry over the x in front. And again, remember that all of these are separate terms, x, x plus 3, and x plus 4. They're all just being multiplied together. So there's no need for brackets or parentheses around this, as long as you can see that they're being multiplied together. Okay, now here we notice that we have an x squared or higher in all of them. So we want to factor out the highest term we can. So we're going to factor out an x squared from all of them. And now just factor what's in here. This is going to be multiplies to negative 12. So we need know that we need one negative, one positive, and adding to negative 4. So we can use x minus 6 and x plus 2. Alright, now we have something here. We have 4 over x. So what is this doing here? How can we put this back into the form of x squared plus x plus constants. Well, you'll notice that if we're comparing to that form, all of the terms, the exponents, been reduced by 1. x squared to x, x to just constant, which, by the way, is also x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1. So you could say there's an x to the 0 here. So we have x to the first, x to the 0. And 4 over x, we'll remember dividing by x is the same as multiplying by x to the negative 1. So all we really have here is x to the first, to the 0, to the negative 1. So we're just going to multiply everything by x. In order to do that, we're factoring out 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. So now when we rewrite everything back in the standard form of a quadratic, which is what we've been doing you'll see that we factored out an x to the negative 1 in order to increase the exponent by 1 in all of these terms. And of course, multiplying by 1 over x is the same as just dividing by x, since we could put all of this up in the numerator. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So we can write this as this factored over x. And now we just have to factor this. We're going to use the x here since we have a coefficient other than 1 in front of the highest term here, x squared. Factors of 5 are 1 and 5. Factors of 4 are 1 and 4. We need to put the 4 here and the 1 there in order to multiply across and get 20 plus 1 equals 21, which is what we have here. So this is going to be x plus 4 times 5x plus 1. Okay, now let's move on to something where we have to do more than 
just factor out an x or something like that. If you look at this, now we have x to the fourth, x squared, and x to the zero here. So now they're no longer one apart, which means we have to do something different. So it might help if we write out what this would be if it were a quadratic. It would look just like this. Now you'll notice that when we factor something like this, the terms always end up being something x plus a number and then something x plus a number. So since we have x to the fourth here, we're going to have terms that look like this. So this would be some number x plus some number times some number x plus some number. What we're going to do here is the same thing except all of these will change the x's will change to x squared and that's so that when we multiply them together we're going to get back to the x to the fourth that we're starting with here and you will see that that works out. So let's just factor this like normal like the normal quadratic. We need factors of 9 be either 1 and 9 or 3 and 3. I'm just going to pick the correct ones here so that we can go a little faster. Actually, you know what? This is the correct ones. Yes. Yes, okay. There we go. That is the correct factorization. So factoring this, we would get x plus 2 times 9x plus 2. Now all we have to do is make these x's squared. And you'll see that this indeed works out. 9x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 18x squared. That's the plus 20x squared plus 4. So what we can see here is that because we multiply these two terms together with equal exponents, the exponent in either of these terms has to be half of the one that in the leading term. So that rule is going to help us when we have something like this. Now if you have x's in all of them, it's usually a good idea to factor the x as much x as many x x's as you can out of the problem. Because right now we have exponents of seven, four, and one. So if we factor out an x, we will have six, three, and zero. So now we do the same thing where we just factor this like normal. Let's see. There we go. That would be, yes, negative 29. Okay. Remember to keep the x in front. Now the only difference is that because we have x to the sixth here as a leading term, and also notice that this always has to be half of that. We're going to have 4x to the something minus 3, 3x to the something minus 5, and the something, the exponent here, f is half of this. So it's going to be 3, and that's because we can see x cubed times x cubed will be x to the sixth, which is our leading term. So now with something like this, where we once again have this fraction here, it can be hard to see what we need to factor out. So it might be helpful to rewrite this, this part here as 7 times x to the negative 3. Instead of dividing by x to the positive 3, we multiply by x to the negative 3. And now you can see, maybe even write in a 1 here, this is 5, 1, negative 3. So there four apart. 
and what we want to do as always is get it so that this is just a constant or multiplying by x to the zero so that means we have to raise all of these by three which means we factor out x to the negative three so factoring out a one over x cubed and all of these exponents will go up by three Okay, so now we just factor this part over here. And we're going to have x, x half of this, x to the fourth minus 7 times 3x to the fourth minus 1 over this x cubed that's factored out. Okay, now let's look at one more type of trinomial factoring. Where we have multiple variables. So, you'll notice that the first term here has x squared and the second term here has y squared. So what that means is that we're going to end up factoring this as something half of the two is one. This is, think of it as a standard quadratic. If you ignore all of the y's, it is a standard quadratic. It's just 6x squared plus 17x plus 5. So we know we're going to have something x plus. Now the difference here is that we don't end with a constant. We end with a y squared. So instead of x's plus constant, we have x's plus y's and then the same thing again and if you look at this sort of theoretical example we'll have x times x is x squared then plus x times y plus x times y which is what we have here and then plus y squared so now the only question of course is what are these numbers and to do that we once again just factor it like a standard quadratic factors of 1 and 6 actually I believe that will not work we will need 2 and 3 for this one yes there we go so instead of 2x plus 5 this is just 2x plus 5y this will be 3x instead of plus 1 it will be plus 1y Okay, now we can do the same thing, but with all kinds of different exponent values. So again, ignore all of this stuff in the middle term because that will that will just produce itself correctly if we get make sure that the f the first and the last terms are matching. The only thing we need this middle term for is the coefficient for when we're actually doing this factoring x. So let's just factor it as if it were, say, treat it like a normal quadratic. It would be 3x squared plus x minus 2. So we would have this as the factorization. So now we just need to figure out what are the variables in these factored terms. Well, half x to the fourth, we take half of four, so we're going to have x squared. And then in this, so that's x squared for the first, first term in each of these parentheses. And then half y to the sixth, half of the exponent, will have y cubed in the second piece in each of these parentheses. So we have x squared plus y cubed times x squared plus y cubed. And we just use these numbers to fill it in. So first we have 1x squared plus 1y cubed times 3x squared 
minus 2y cubed. And if you want to check your work, just make sure that the middle fills out correctly. We know we're going to get the correct terms on the outside, 3x to the 4th and negative 2y to the 6th, but just make sure. You'll see here we have x squared times negative 2y cubed plus y cubed times 3x squared. And that would be a bit complicated to check, or at least I'm not seeing it right now. So, well, if the first, if the outer terms always work correctly, then the middle ones will be correct as well. So you really don't have to worry about checking your work. Actually, let's save that problem for last. Let's do this one next. We're going to bring in three variables now. So the first thing you want to do is you'll notice the middle term has all three variables. You want to ignore that. Don't worry about that. Just focus on the outer two terms. And again, it's, for, it's simple. We just follow the same rule. We take half of each of these exponents. So we're going to have the first piece of both of these parentheses will be x to the sixth z squared. And then the second piece will be y half of two, just y. So we're going to have x to the we're going to have numbers in front of x sixth z squared, and numbers in front of y. Now we just look at the coefficients of these three original terms so that we can factor it. There we go. So we end up with 1x to the 6z squared plus 2y times 5x to the 6z squared minus 8y. Okay, and now we end with a challenging one. With this one, you should you notice that something is wrong because we have we have x's here and then we have x's and y's here. If you notice in this one, we didn't have we just x's and z's here and y's over here. If you have the same variable in the first and last term, it means that it's going to be very difficult to factor. So we want to factor that out. Easiest way to do to factor out x's here, since we have them all over the place, is going to be to rewrite them with negative exponents. And while we're at it, we might as well factor out a negative in front of the whole thing, since we don't want a negative in front of the first term. So let's put a negative in front of the whole thing, and then here we will have. Uh, 